Hello and welcome to Nigeria, The Road to 2019, a series of programmes where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I'm Charles Anyekulu. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, all the news, comment and analysis that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including... After many months of political conflict between the leading political parties and as they attempt to recover from that sinister attack on the National Assembly, are we nearing its end? Or is there worse to come with another imminent assault on Nigeria's democracy with all this talk of impeachment? We hear from a lawyer and leading member of parliament coming up. Now, it's a political story that's gripped Nigerians and one that leaves people full of regret when there appears to be a pause in what is a richly bewitching drama that's unfolding and twisting and turning in different directions almost every day. And even though we've seen it all before, most notably in 2015, and to that extent it'll be no cliffhanger for anyone even remotely familiar with that period of Nigerian politics, nevertheless it is the wonder of the retelling and repeating of that trail of political carnage by Nigeria's relentlessly self-absorbed politicians that makes this latest tempest, particularly this riot of dismemberment for President Buhari's ruling APC party, so fresh and fascinating for a captive Nigerian and international audience. As you probably know, it all began as a spark of dissent a few months ago in the APC party, which then blazed into a flame of open rebellion, culminating in the mass defections from the ruling party to the opposition and igniting a spark of hope in the party that's the main challenger to President Buhari's hopes of re-election in 2019, the PDP. But even as the PDP shuddered with ecstatic pleasure at this bruising turn of events for the APC, a blockade of Nigeria's National Assembly by armed, masked men from the country's security service threatened to choke the opposition, stoking conspiracy theories and lots of rhetoric about a presidential plot, all of which have been robustly denied. Well, now the talk is about removal and impeachment and how rich or poor are the prospects of accomplishing this. So how much has Nigeria's democracy and the country's two most powerful political parties, the ruling APC and the opposition PDP, been corroded by the acid of these withering developments? And does the APC have the numbers and the moral clout to persuade the National Assembly to move the articles of impeachment to the full floor, or at least force a resignation or a removal. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Honorable Mohamed Tahir Manguno, three-time member of the House of Representatives with the APC party, who's also a lawyer and former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Bornu State in Northeast Nigeria. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely delighted to see you again. I mean, I, I've been away and I got back and, and it, there's still a lot of political turmoil. I mean, help us to take a realistic look at the storm inside the APC and what appears to be its strident determination to remove and impeach the Senate President Bukala Saraki. Is that showing any signs of subsiding or are we likely to see more serious gunfire in that direction? Well, with regard to the issue of uh, impeachment of the Senate President, the National Assembly is, and indeed, Nigerians are guided in all their actions and activities by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the grand norm of the land. And when it comes to the National Assembly, apart from the Constitution, we are also guided by our rules that is guiding our procedures in the National Assembly. With regard to the issue of uh, impeachment, the Constitution is very clear and unambiguous as to how to remove a presiding officer of 
either of the chambers of the national yeah but Assembly. never mind how to remove it do, it's, do you it's, it's have that yeah but but do you have aspirations I'm coming, within I'm, the I'm, APC I'm to, to remove it i'm coming right to that. okay the constitution is very clear and ambiguous as i said is two third of the membership right. of the either senate or the house of representatives that you have to master to, rem to remove mm. your presiding officer Le right now apc as a party we are still health bent on removing the senate president right so do, that, do, is, that is do, your do, state do, we don't have the two third right we have the majority and right. then in parliaments all over the world. Now, when you say the, the majority, you mean the majority in the Senate? Yes, in the Senate. But not in the, in the whole sort of national but in assembly. But in the, in the whole of the national assembly, right. the APC, both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate, we have the majority. I of understand the in the Senate you've got 56. Yes. And they've got 49. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Right. We, we still have the majority. So, and in, in parliaments all over the world, the normal convention is the leading party that is supposed to produce the presiding officer of the parliament. So Nigeria should not be an exception. So since Senator Saraki has on his own volition decided to relinquish his membership of the APC, on which platform he was elected to come to the Senate, and on which platform he was elected to be the Senate president, on moral grounds, on moral situations, he is supposed to honorably resign that but, position right so that a member of the leading party should occupy that position and that is the convention right all but, but, in but parliament there, all over the world is there never mind what happens all over the world yes. well let's talk about nigeria is there precedent for that sort of thing in the nigeria national assembly has a precedent been set before well the president has not been said before because this thing is happening happening for the first time well i was having a chat with my it's happening, for the, it's happening right. for the first time. Even in 2014, when Tambual defected mm -hmm. from PDP to APC, as a result of the merger of, of the coming together of APC, CPC, ANPP, and then the then AC, ACN, mm -hmm. we are able to have the majority. The APC became the majority party. You and mean, then you mean as, when? A, a, in 2014. As right. a result of uh, the major defections and then the uh, right the because because what and, I was and going because to of that right well, because of that time we retained well that, that's what I was going to majority. ask you because because when governor the current governor of Sokoto State yes. Aminu Tambuwa yes. defected from the PDP to the APC mm -hmm. he remained Speaker of the House because the APC was in majority yeah well so that's the difference because I mean it, it sounds right now like what you're trying to do with saraki sounds like a political act yes and i mean i'm trying to determine the difference between what happened then and what is happening now and you're saying that after you formed a coalition of parties yes. you became the majority we became the majority and therefore it it it, it was constitutional for tambuwal to remain even though he defected yes right now the, the, the Senate... Um, Not constitutional, even morally. We are, we are talking about moral grounds. Constitutionally. Right. Constitutionally. The Constitution the, did not say it is a majority party that is going to produce the presiding officers of the... Right. Of the, of the either of the chamber. <laughs> Why the Constitution said is any... Person chosen any, by any members. Any chosen from among them. Yeah. So, so it can be abga. Right. So, so why, why are you then insisting? And, and what I don't understand is why is impeachment an option in a situation that you're talking about purely custom or a moral issue? I mean, wh why is that? Because I mean, I Im say, impeachment uh, the, implies a criminal act. We are saying, we are, we are, that is why I'm saying we, are, we will, since the APC in major, is in majority, boys based on moral grounds, we are the, the, the membership of the Senate, which is APC majority, will force Saraki right. to resign. So the issue of impeachment is not what we're well, talking about. Well, impeachment, you have to have to third majority. Well, not only that, the, 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 there has to be strong evidence of criminal, a criminal act in order for you to in, go ahead and impeach him. Now, you, you talk about this two-thirds majority. Yes. 
um, as you said, the law stipulates that for him to be removed, you must achieve that. Yes. Does the APC have the capacity to muster those numbers? Well, I'm not a member of the Senate. I'm a member yeah, but, but of you're, you're in the, the National I'm, Assembly. I'm the National Assembly. And you're a member well, of the APC, uh, so you know I'm, what's I'm, going I'm on. I'm a member of the APC, but as I was saying earlier on, a lot of PDP senators also at the end of the day, may have the sympathy to remove the Senate president based on these uh, moral grounds that I have told you. You know, in Parliament, it's, it's, it's a question of uh, negotiation, horse trading, give and take, and right. what have you. So the APC may, at the end of the day, most of the two third majority to remove Senator, Senator Saraki because it's a question of uh, horse trading, talking give and take and what have you. But as it is now, the APC does not have the two-third majority to remove... Uh, right, and, and you simply Saraki. can't muster that because the opposition aren't going to give you the well, extra we, we, you can never, you can never right. tell. That's why I tell you it's a question of uh, horse trading and then talking among... Right, the now, now the Senate party. President Bukala Saraki was of course at the center of those dramatic events between the National Assembly and security operatives. Um, Mr. Saraki, of course, as you mentioned recently, defecting from the ruling APC to the opposition PDP. And some have suggested that the siege, that siege, was an attempt to force the resignation of Mr. Saraki as Senate president so the APC could appoint a more favorable replacement, which is pretty much what you've said now that that is what your stated aim is in the APC. Others suggest that that siege at the National Assembly was all staged by the opposition PDP to smear the government by making it appear as if it was ordered b by the government. Which of those two scenarios can you tell us now, based on your knowledge of what's going on inside the National Assembly and in your APC party, well, which uh, of those scenarios is more accurate? Based on the the first scenario that you pointed out, when members or officers, men of uh, director of the state, uh, state security service embedded the National Assembly, mm -hmm. it is only the PDP senators and PDP members of the House of Representatives that were in the Senate, in the National Assembly, this is, is it is in the public domain. You mean inside the National Assembly inside or the outside the National Assembly? Inside the National, inside Assembly. National Assembly. Right. They were the one that went early enough when when there was siege and then insisted that they should be allowed in and all of them went in and they were seated there. Not a single APC mem APC member of the Senate or, or the House of Representatives was there. So if it was intended to remove Senator Saraki, then definitely APC senators will be around. Yeah, but we're for looking the purpose, at, we're for looking the purpose at, of uh, impeaching, yeah. uh, uh, removing Saraki. Yeah, but we were looking at pictures just earlier of yes. the same security operatives surrounding Bukala Saraki's house and essentially trying to prevent him from leaving his house. What has that got to do with the, the issue that we're talking about? Because, I mean, the, the, the question remains whether or not this is something that was ordered by the government well not. you know uh, that's why uh, immediately the national assembly was embedded the acting president mm -hmm. who is a member of the apc ordered the removal of the director general of the, the department of state services who ordered the invasion of the national assembly so this is a clear indication that the apc does uh, does not have a hand no no it's not it's not a clear indication it's or, a clear, or, or because no, it was ordered well, by, the, uh, by the no, by, no, no. By, by the acting person yeah but let me tell you why it's, of the yeah, but let me tell you why it's not clear anybody could have ordered it i mean the the guy who was the um lao al daura who was the head of the S dss yes. could have acted on his own on behalf of the president but also any I mean, officers within the presidency or within the APC could have ordered that action or certainly helped to strengthen the belief that well, this is what the uh, president wants. I'm not, I'm not, so so I'm it may not have come from the president himself or the vice president, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't have been ordered by somebody w within the You party. know, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a security operative, but I know as a matter of fact that 
the Director General of the State Security Service takes his order from the president or uh, the acting president, as the case may be. Right. So, so if he acts on his own, then he is on his own. Right. That they're saying if. And therefore, it should not be uh, attributed to the APC or the, the, the government that is being led by APC. Right. Okay. Well, stay with us, uh, Honorable Mohammed Tahir Manguna. We're going to take a short break. You're watching Nigeria, the road to 2019. Plenty more still ahead, including we continue our chat on the political pantomime of hustling, jostling Nigerian politicians. Is it all window dressing or could it threaten President Buhari's re-election agenda? Stay with us.